Hoop. Our good buddy Scott Hastings played in the NBA, member of the 1990 Bad Boy Pistons, now a color analyst with the Nuggets. He will join us here in a moment. But I want to play what Eric Spolstra had to say. Ramona Shelburne of the Mothership asked the question, which I thought was a fair question. Eric Spolstra did not think so. This is probably oversimplifying things, but sometimes when, when teams play against Jokic, you, you turn him into a scorer, you turn him into a passer, and he controls the game. You, he only had four assists tonight. Yeah, that, that's, that's ridiculous. You know, it's just, that's the untrained eye that, that says something like that. This guy's an incredible player. Twice in two seasons, he's been the best player on this planet. You can't just say... <laughs> Oh, make him a score. <laughs> That's not how they play. They, they have so many different actions that just get you compromised. We have to focus on what we do. Um, you know, we try to do things the hard way, um, and he requires you to do many things the hard way. And we, he has our full respect. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Coach. Okay, and it's a walk-off, too. I don't know why that bothered him so much, unless he's really careful of trying to oversimplify the Joker. So the compliment would be, um, hey, he can score, he can pass. If we can limit one and maybe, you know, uh, is really good at the other one, we still feel like we can win. He's gone over 43 times in the playoffs. They've lost all three times. Are you trying to make him one-dimensional? How do you make him one-dimensional? I, I, don't, I don't think that's a preposterous question. It felt like, and she's even saying, I'm oversimplifying here. But... It uh, that was a, like a Greg Popovich, you know, untrained eye. You never played the game, yeah, Paul. If you're Ramona Shelburne after Game Three, you you raise your hand and say, "Coach, like you, I never played an NBA game. What are your thoughts <laughs> on Jimmy Butler's blank, blank blank?" No, if Joker goes off and has like 12 assists and has you know 25 points, uh, Coach, I might be oversimplifying this, but it looked like you were uh, trying to let him be a passer tonight. Not a, not a score. Your thoughts, Coach? <laughs> yes, Eden. And he's like, he throws the untrained eye thing at Ramona Shelburne, uh, which was really unfair and just rude. Yeah. But then, like, there's literally former players who are working as analysts now saying the exact same thing. I'm pretty, would that consider, would they be considered a trained eye? Um, you would think, but Bam Adebayo was talking about that prior to the start of the series. That if you can make him one-dimensional. Scott Hastings joins us now. No, the Nuggets uh, TV color analyst, former NBA player, and was at last night's game. Let me start there with Spolstra and uh, what he had to say in response to Ramona Shelburne's question. Is that is that logical to approach the Denver Nuggets that, hey, if we limit uh, Joker to uh, just scoring, that we can beat him? Well, here's, here's the take on words to that statement makes in my opinion um it's not joker not getting people involved you know i keep a stat uh because this came up a couple years ago well you know just let joker get his so i i i do the games i'm calling them on radio still and i'll keep a stat how many you know kick out missed shots drive the basket got a layup get fouled right where you, you get free throws but you don't get an assist he had eight of those last night so if all those shots are hit, all of a sudden he has 12 assists to go with his other stats. That's a pretty good night. So I, I, I don't think it's, oh, well, let's let him get his. Listen, we all we all need a little help once in a while, you know. And I and I I thought, like I said, Michael Porter, you know, had another bad shooting night. Um, one of seven, I think, from the three-point line. And, you know, when you're a guy inside and, and and you watch that game, you see how – I mean, there's bodies around him wherever he's going. And anybody want to tell me they let Joker get 41 last night? <laughs> I'm not sure they watched that game. <laughs> I mean, they were all over him. I thought after game one, Miami had open looks. They just didn't make them. So I thought yeah. that that was a deceiving win by Denver – that Miami didn't play that well. Now you have Miami not winning and Jimmy Butler not playing that well. And now you go to game three in Miami. So what is the expectation level? Uh, I think I think a little bit of game one, a little bit of game two. I think um, both teams want to shoot the ball better. Uh, better. I thought Duncan Robinson, who had, had zero points at half, 
they let him get started. And, and, you know, you let a guy get hot all of a sudden. And that's, that's the thing in my hope for, you know, Porter Jr. And even in the broadcast last night, when he made that one little layup, I'm like, well, maybe now he's seen the ball go in. Um, listen, I, I said this before. I, I think Denver's probably a better team on paper. Um, the only people that really play on paper anymore are, are puppy dogs. So I don't think that means much. Um, but I think it's going to be a good series. I and Listen, hey, what the, what's the old saying? The series doesn't start until somebody wins on the road. And, and guess what? Miami just – uh, made the first day when the series has started. What's the adjustment now that Denver makes to counteract the adjustments that Miami made? Well, first of all, we're heading out today, so we're, I, I'm getting all my Ricky Martin uh, DVDs out and, oh. and, and, and music. Okay. I figured, and, and a Miami sound machine, so oh. I figured that would kind of get me in the mood. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking about sending some of those soundtracks to Malone to see kind of play for the guys mm. to get him ready. Um, the physicality, listen, um, you, you can't win. And I, and, and I really do, and I say this respect, think this is a softer league right now. I just kind of way the nature of basketball has turned more finesse, if you will, great athletes, better athletes than there's ever been in the history of the world, top to bottom. You got guys that we're never going to know the, their names in, in five or 10 years that are 10 times the athletes of, of dudes that have, you know, that we're still thinking about. Um, but I still think in this time, in this series, in, in this type of stuff on the line, that that the more physical teams going to win this series and, and Miami, you know, like I said, a couple of calls, the game changes, but I think Miami is a more physical team last night. He's Scott Hastings, the Nuggets color analyst, former NBA player, member of the 1990 champion Pistons. Did you guys have to talk about what the philosophy was on the Pistons to beat up Michael Jordan? Uh, no, no, it was it almost like you walked in the door and you had an ejection or something, and then it was ingrained in your brain, Jordan rule. And, and I remember them talking about it. Yeah, so we know how to play him. We know how to play him. And I remember uh, Brendan Malone, Michael Malone's dad, he and I would drive to the airport. I said, what, no, what is, you know, the Jordan rules? What are they? Said, well, here's what it is. And, um, no, then it, it became, <laughs> listen, that was like a tattoo. You came in and that was, that was you know, you knew exactly what that, that was. But Chuck Daly never spoke about beating up Jordan? They were talking about beating him up. We just said no layups. I mean, I mean, it was it was done nicely. We were gentlemen, Dan, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so to speak. Um, no, it, it was it was we wanted to get up on him when he got the ball. When he got rid of the ball, you aren't letting him catch it, and he was getting no layups. That 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 were the three simple rules basically that we had. But I wonder if you guys changed the NBA by the way you played against him. Therefore, he started lifting weights. You made Jordan even better because of the physicality that the bad boy Pistons had. Well, the the little documentary that came out, remember of Jordan in the middle of COVID, he kind of he kind of admitted that. And yeah, you know, if we were just nicer to him, then maybe <laughs> and, 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 and you know, all of a sudden maybe, you know, we could have won a couple more in Detroit. But um listen, this First of all, I still think he's one of the most special people that's ever played this game. And I don't care if anybody can get in the argument of who's this and who's that. But um, it, there, there's just a nature. You and I could go back to the, the mid-'80s Lakers Celtics when the, the, what, the clear path is what it's called now, rule first came into tape because remember they're they're clothesline Lambus on the or, or Rambus mm-hmm. on the fast break and doing all this stuff. So the game has changed. A they say for health health and safety or whatever. I th- I say it's because they just don't want, you know, to see somebody decapitated right there on live TV. And I can understand that. Um but you gotta adjust how you play. And that that's another thing also that I don't think is talked about enough. Um, and I don't like, like I said, I don't like officials, but that's, that's, that's not here or there. You and I will write a book about that. Um, 
But each one has their distinct personality. You got to understand what that personality is, and you got to play to that personality. Uh, Daryl Garrison, the great uh, late great Daryl Garrison, you knew that was going to be a, 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 a tough physical game because he didn't want to call a lot of fouls. He had to adjust. Uh, Earl Strom, you saw him walking the building. You were hoping you were the visiting team. Jake O'Donnell, he rewarded hustle. I mean, and these are, these are three legendary NBA coaches. And it's the same way. And I, you got to know the personality guys, and you got to play to them. Uh, I think the league wants this more of a finesse athletic game, and that's what's turned into. But sure seems like to me in the finals, the more physical team wins. Safe travels, Scott. Always great to talk to you, buddy. You know what, Dan? I just want to say I miss you, I love you, and I need you in my life. Well, keep winning, and then because if you know, I like a, I'm a front runner. If you guys don't win, then <laughs> Scott, no, I'll be I'll be uh, calling you to talk about the Broncos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, you won't ever talk about that. <laughs> Ask Fritzy about that. I guarantee you, Fritzy's come to you a thousand times trying to get Bronco guests. That ain't gonna work. Uh, hey, all I know is Russ is leaner and meaner. That's all I need this year for uh, Russ. Let's ride. He he does he does look uh, leaner, doesn't he? I don't know what that means, but he's leaner and meaner. Yeah, I, 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 I'm leaner here in the last couple of weeks, too, and I still can't get up off this couch. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. See you, buddy. Scott Hastings, former Nem- 